I'm Patrick. I work at Sears as the SVP for Data Analytics and Artificial Intelligence. And today I'm going to demonstrate to you how we can use large language models to talk to our dashboard. Now we know that large language models do hallucinate. So if we ask for numerical, factual, logical information, we cannot 100% trust the answer. So why don't we use large language models to do what they do best, model language? So I speak English and would ask my questions in English. Let's get the LLM to translate that into an SQL-based uh, question. Retrieve the answer from a database that I know and trust, which has been properly governed. And then the answer, being a table of numbers, is going to be translated into a graphical image back to me so that when I ask a question, I can get an image back, understand what's going on, and take an actionable decision. Let's take a look at a practical example of a financial data set from one of our banking customers that gives us the risk score of loan recipients paying or not paying back their loans. So if we look, first of all, at the question of risk scores across the United States, which is the prompt I provided, that's being translated into an SQL query of my database. And there's, of course, an explanation of how that translation was being performed. The answer is, of course, a table of numbers with the states and the risk scores in the various columns. That is now translated into this map image. And again, an explanation provided for how that's done with some additional numerical information here in the text, giving you the actual numerical risk score in the states of Mississippi and Kentucky, which were particularly high, that you can also see in the coloration of the map. Now, of course, we might wonder why are the scores in Mississippi particularly high? So let's first of all think that it might be because of the gender and age distribution in that scenario. So let's ask, what is that distribution across the United States? Here we go, and we see that that's the distribution as a nice looking bar chart um, in the various age categories and uh, the distribution of percentages. And of course, again, we did not tell the large language model of how to group these ages, the fact that they're in buckets of about 10 years and starting at 18. That's something that it decided on its own, but it's quite sensible and therefore beautifully answers our question. Of course, now we need to ask the exact same question for the state of Mississippi to see if there's a difference. Let's take a mental note of this uh, graphic and we'll look at its sibling. And here we see the same distribution for the state of Mississippi, which if we think back what it was for the all of the United States is approximately the same, give or take a little bit, certainly not different enough to explain the extreme difference in risk scores. So it cannot be that. So what happens if we might look at something else, which is the active credits across income groups? So here we see a box and whiskers plot that gives us on the vertical axis the number of loans on average that these people have and on the horizontal axis the income uh, of these groups of people. So we see a nice hill distribution with lower number of credits for the low income families and a higher number of credits for the medium and higher income groups with the lower again for the very high income group. So. That is the distribution across the whole of the United States. And of course, we want to compare that again to the distribution in Mississippi. And now you can see the distribution for Mississippi is significantly different uh, from the distribution across the United States as the number of credits for the low income group is much higher than in the average for the United States and much higher than all the other income groups in the state. Meaning that the vast majority of loans in the state of Mississippi are in the low income group and therefore it shouldn't be a surprise that the risk of them paying that loan back is higher. So we have our explanation. In sum, this use case showed you that large language models can be used to retrieve accurate and trustworthy information because the large language models were not used to create 
the numerical information. They were used to translate English to SQL and tables of numbers back to graphics. They were not used to create the numbers. And that is the correct way to use large language models in a business scenario. We hope that this has been useful and you can use that in your company. With Google's Gemini, Sears is creating the new way to analyze and visualize data.